Today we'll make greeting cards into decor. Keep watching. We're going to start off with a variety of cards. There are cards that you can get at the Dollar Tree that are 50 cents a piece, two for a dollar, so you can certainly use those. Or if you go to the thrift store, there's always an abundance of cards that people give away. So you can choose those. So these are all Easter themed, and they're still in great shape. Going to use those boxes that you see there. These are decor pieces from Dollar Tree, and we're going to use those as our frames or the base for our DIYs. All right, so when you're tearing these cards apart, just be sure that you crease them well, press them down well, so that you don't tear the part that you want to use. They're made of cardstock, so they're a little bit stronger than paper, obviously. Um, but feel free to use scissors if you want to cut them. Use a rotary blade. You could use a paper cutter for scrapbooking, whatever you want to do. So these are almost like 3D. You could actually pull them apart if you wanted to. I wanna leave it on there for the eggs, but for this one, I'm gonna peel that off. Just be careful so you don't bend the picture in the front and that you don't tear. That's why I'm pulling it apart while my hands are very close to it. to Make sure that I'm watching where I pull apart. Okay, so it turned out pretty good there. And then this one, it's 3D also, the little bunny and the flags. All I'm going to do is pull off the little sign that says to someone special. Now I'm measuring the inside of the frame there to see how much space I'm going to need and where I want to put my card. I have a roller, rotary blade, which is fairly new to me and um, it's going to take me some practice. I'm afraid I'm going to push too hard and go through this mat. So I'm going to get a new cutting mat um, to save myself some time there. So I won't be so scared of it. So once you know what size you're going to use, you can put your card either on top of that frame or under the frame, inside of the frame, whichever way. But I will tell you that I've tried to pull the frame off for one of these and it will just tear the backing, the paper on the backing. So I'm just going to use a few little dots of glue so that I can use this one again. And really they are cute by themselves, but just to show you how to use the cards, we're going to use the boxes for that. Now to cover up the little part where the foam came off or the little piece came off, if, if you have a tear or a wording that you don't like, Maybe there's something written on there that you can't remove. You can cover it up with decor pieces. You can use buttons or beads or these little paper flowers that I use that I got from the thrift store. And you can just put them on there, anything that coordinates. Maybe even some little bitty Easter eggs if you wanted to. So I'm just going to put those on with a little bit of hot glue. And that's that. Very easy. There's a little string hanging off. This is like sewn down. So I just clipped that off to make it look neat. And we're gonna move on to the next one. Looks like the measurements are the same. I came up with a problem here, which I will show you shortly, but I'm gonna show you a very clever way to fix it. You know how Dollar Tree has those signs that are crooked and they're not even, and no matter what you do, you can't fix it. You can't pull things off and move them. Well, that's kind of what I came to on this one. And you'll see what I mean. Dark gray frame is not by any means in the middle of that sign. It is not, no matter what I do with it, I can't get it that way. Even cutting the card at an angle, I couldn't get it, I just couldn't get it right to my eye. You see how crooked that is? So I'm gonna cover it up with some lace. Mm hmm. Yeah. This is gonna be lacy like a frilly little lacy Easter basket. I'm using some lace that I got from Goodwill. And I'm just going to pleat it. I'm going to put my hot glue down and then quickly pleat it about an inch over and then tuck it down into my line of glue. You're going to keep doing that and keep adding your glue and protect your fingers because the lace is very thin. You can get lace anywhere. Thrift store is for me going to be the best place, but you can get it anywhere. 
and it doesn't have to be expensive lace either. I looked up one day, went to Goodwill, and they had an entire huge table full of vintage lace on these cards or these plastic um, like things that they're wrapped on. Oh my goodness, I went crazy in there. I had some scissors and I was cutting off huge pieces of it. I was so excited to be able to get it and I have a couple of projects that I want to do with it. So let me know if you enjoy watching the videos like that because it's a little bit different than your typical farmhouse. You know, if that's why you come and watch my crafts, it's a little bit different, but it's definitely like rustic. It's more of a shabby chic look. So let me know if you like shabby chic because I can certainly do more of that with all the lace that I've collected. So when you get to your corners, just be sure that you turn just like this, turn it and press it down. Then you get a nice little corner. No big deal, just simple, right? So when you get this lace down and it's on there, you know, evenly spaced around your card, you can't even tell that this was crooked at all. And since the main focal point is going to be our card for this project, then it doesn't matter that you can't necessarily see all of that sign underneath. So I'm just cutting that off at an angle. And then this real pretty lace that I got has little pearl like teardrop beads or almond shaped beads on it. So I thought this would be good for a trim on the inside. And I think the lace looks really pretty because the card is so delicate looking. That upper layer is cut out and it's real delicate. So, and so is lace. So I think that it's, I mean, what do you think? I think it's a pretty good look though. So I'm just trying to decide, do I wanna go across the top of that box because my card is shorter or what I wanna do? And um, I decided to trim out that frame instead of trimming out the card because I know what I want to do to the top that's going to cover up that gap. That's not going to be a problem. Again, with your corners, just turn it, put your glue down, and press it down. I don't think there's any other type of glue you can use but hot glue for this project. This, I don't think anything else is going to hold it like it should. won't give it that quick hold. Okay, so we're all the way back around. You can see I'm just kind of zigzagging that over the sign and the lace so that it all is bonded together there. And then I'm just going to cut this off and then trim it down just a little bit. I'd rather cut it a little long and trim it than have cut it too short. So now I've taken this burlap ribbon that came from Dollar Tree and I'm gonna make a really pretty bow for the top. The eggs are like a, a Tiffany blue and a pink and an orange and a green color. So I think the pink works really well for this. I've just made a loop for the top, which is going to be the bow. And then the other strip that's laying there is going to be the tail. You guys have seen me made this bow before. It's really easy. Make whatever type of bow that you like to go on yours. You can make something more fancy if you want to. You can add some lace to that if you have some wired lace. If you don't use something with wire in it, it won't stand up. It'll just kind of be floppy. So I decided to leave any lace out of this bow and just make it simple. There's enough going on, I think, in this project with all the cutouts and the lace and the, you know, it's pretty busy as it is. I don't want to make this part of it super busy. So I've just tied it into the middle and there's our bow and I'm going to dovetail my ends. Trying to make sure that my ends are even so one side's not longer than the other and then I cut off the string that I tied it with and that's just a little scrap piece of yarn that I had. Okay so that's going to go right there in that spot where we had a blank spot. And here I have a little, um, little bit of hot glue to press that down. Hold it in place for just a minute because it's uh, naturally going to try to pull up. If you don't hold it, it'll lift away from the frame because of the, the lace ribbon over there. So give it just a minute to dry. Now edit some of that out. This little wooden bird came from Goodwill. And I have two sides. So I'm trying to decide how I want to do it. But I know I want it lifted up and not laying flat on that bow. So I'm just using one of these little wood blocks that came from Dollar Tree. Put that in the middle to raise it up. They make really good risers. 
And again, I don't want it to be too busy, so I'm going to not use that glittery side. I'm going to use the plain side. And this little bird matches one of the one or two of the eggs down there. So I think he looks cute and simple right in the middle. So that's our second option. It's the most fancy option. Pretty shabby chic. What do you think? But hey, you can't tell it was crooked, can you? Nope, you covered it up. Last one, most easy one. Another little gorgeous 3D card. Also, Dollar Tree has cards with these cutouts like this that are really intricate and gorgeous. They're the dollar cards, and they're usually on a separate stand. So if you want to get the ones that look a little more handmade, if that's the look you're going for, be sure to check out those stands at your Dollar Tree. Okay, so I've just trimmed that down to fit on the inside of that frame this time. And I'm going to use just a little glue and put it right over the center inside of the frame. So that's the simplest one. You know, if, if you're doubting your skills, you're doubting your level of craftiness, you shouldn't, number one. But if you do, you can certainly do one like this, and it looks just as cute. So here we go. What do you think about that? Isn't that precious? Here they are together. Which one do you like the best? Thank you guys for watching, for sharing, for commenting, and giving me all the thumbs up. I certainly do appreciate it. I hope that you are cozy at home, taking care of yourselves, finding joy in your surroundings, and crafting away. And I'll see you again very, very soon. Bye.